Exactly right. Galvin Gallo has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now the former fourth-round pick, it's Kalen Balazs. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard, stop short of the 35. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Jameis to throw it. He's got Tunyon complete over the middle. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 24-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now Winston. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes. With a big third down coming up, he's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. Third and five. This will be the eighth play of the drive. Open on the left side. This is Valdez Scantley. And the Falcons are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate. Got the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, it has to be pinpoint here. Yeah, was, I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. Balage. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Good first step there defensively, but they're still knocking on the doorstep, so maybe another run here? I think so. And one of my favorite coaches used to say, son, if you could darn near lay down near the... And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. Cameron Balazs, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons are on the board first here in this division round matchup. Extra point. It's good, and that gives the Falcons a seven to nothing lead. Out is 
leads the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Three and a half to go, first quarter. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Second down and eight. There's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And this will be a Vikings first down as he gets this up past the 30. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. After the run by Jones, here's first and ten. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Second down, it's Jones. And he's got some space here. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 38. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. He'll let it go deep for Foster. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Reed. What a start defensively. Your offense goes out, gets the touchdown, and then you get the interception. Just perfect. How about the discipline that they showed on defense? Because after the offense scored to go up 7-zip, you would think they might be a little extra aggressive trying to get back at them. Instead, they read their keys well. When they took the shot downfield, they were more than prepared for that one. Ready, 
About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say when you're running the big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. Not able to go anywhere that time. Second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Here's second and ten. Throwing, Winston. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. Well, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up, back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle? Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. You gotta try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. On third down, Winston. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away, incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand and forcing a three and out and giving the ball back to their offense. On the return is Peterson. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. He'll let it go deep for Foster. And it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes his quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence that borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some Dutch. Yeah, especially maybe want to look at some safer routes after the interception he had that ended their last drive. This will probably be the last play of the quarter. Here's a run with Akers on second down. They find some open field here. Oh, able to avoid him. And they will finally get him down, but not before he takes this to the Falcons' 12-yard line. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Here's Akers. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the nine. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day nine yard line second and six On 
On the give, this is Akers. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. On third down, here's a run by Akers. And he will score! Touchdown, Vikings! Cam Akers, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. for the extra point, Jake Elliott. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This will be fielded inside the five. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. out there for their next drive and on the last go around they really couldn't get anything going they had to punt from deep inside their own territory which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule what they're looking for now is a little more consistency move the ball at least a few times on offense get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field yeah just something to build off of that's what they're looking for here So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Winston. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Derwin James with a pick. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. And we'll see if that pick six looms large as this game continues because we've seen plays like that alter a lot of playoff contests over the years. I would agree with that totally. And you often think to yourself, why do they alter it so much? Because after games, don't we hear coaches and players say, well, one play doesn't usually determine the outcome. But I don't think that's really true, do you? Because there's times when we see plays like that and all of a sudden the momentum jumps to that team side. It deflates the other side and they never pick it back up. And then things really go from there, don't they? That's the thing for me. We talk about momentum changes. A play like that is the ultimate momentum change. This one fielded at the five. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line.
About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And they just had that pick six. I guess the only positive maybe of them returning that for a touchdown. This offense right back out onto the field to try to make up for it. I like that because now it doesn't give them a chance to go to the bench and really settle. You know, to sit there and kind of seethe over the idea that they turned the ball over previously. Right back out there. It's almost like hopping right back on the bike after falling over. See if they can get the ball moving again. Yeah, we'll see if they can do it here. From the 31, Winston. This one into the hands of Burton. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. It's pretty easy to overlook the fullback when you're making your assignments defensively in the pass coverage game, but in this case, they made them pay for that oversight and picks up a nice game. First down, Winston. This one into the hands of the running back, Balazs. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Second and 11 now. Winston now. A throw complete to the tight end, Tunyon. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. The Falcons on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and four. They go play action. Winston. That is caught. It's the tight end, Tunyon. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. To the air again with Winston. And a dangerous throw there on the drop off. Incomplete, nearly intercepted. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. That's complete right side to Lazard. And down inside the 15 he goes. That's good for a first down. There's a guy who went over 1,000 yards receiving in the regular season, and now he's got his first catch of the playoffs. Balaj. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 48 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Second quarter action, two minutes to go on divisional round weekend. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Here's a run with Belage. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. They'll try to run this one in. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Big one. 
and coming in this divisional round playoff. Third and goal. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And it's intercepted at the goal line. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Watching the cast, huh? So there's no way you're reading that on your own. Interception. You can always tell right when they get the football, there's that level of excitement and nervousness and also like, what the heck do I do with this thing? <laughs> and you say, no better sight? Well, not for the quarterback to just throw it. It's bad enough to throw a pick, but to throw one to the big guy? But you're right about that. Now what do I do with it? But what's fun about it is, you know they're going to be in the film room after this ball game, tell all their teammates, maybe I should shift over to offense. I've got skills. What do you think? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I always find myself cheering for them after they intercept it. Unfortunately here, he couldn't make it into the end zone. play of the drive goes the wrong way here's second and 12 The stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary now on third. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. That'll be caught by Anderson. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Vikings! Robbie Anderson, 81 yards. And the Vikings get the quick strike touchdown. Now they talked about stringing together some explosive plays here in the playoffs. That was a pretty explosive play. It certainly was. And if you're going to win on the road, it certainly helps to have big playability in your hip pocket, doesn't it? Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. From the six. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. out there for their next drive and with him down two scores you wonder if they might try and put something together even if it's just to get into field goal range they'll start on the ground with Belage and defensively they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down five yards on the carry good pickup on first down and he'll give it here to his running back and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. Thank you. 
And now a timeout defensively after that first down play. So they're going to make this offense sweat out half number one. Think Winston trying to lay one up deep. And oh, Jameis intercepted a third time. Derwin James with a pick. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. Well, Charles, you know, so close to halftime there. You throw the interception. Not only that, you do give it to them in plus territory as well. Yeah, they were pushing real hard to try and get something more on the board on their side of the ledger right before the half. Looking at it with 20-20 hindsight, though, might have been better to hand it off a few times, hoping to get something to break instead of putting the ball in the air and, of course, putting the ball in jeopardy. Come the fuck on, bro. Let's go, nigga. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And from here, might not be able to take a knee. Might need to run a play here this close to their goal line. They'll throw now on the final play. Winds up and lets it go for Samuel. They've got his man complete. And he gets all the way down to the 30-yard line. So we've come upon halftime here in this NFC Divisional Round matchup. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. A trip to the NFC title game hanging in the balance. Second half action back underway. Taking it about the one. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they've been the better of the two teams through two quarters of play, much to the chagrin of this home crowd. Yeah, this score is a surprise to a lot of folks at home, although not to my dad. He predicted the visitors would win. And maybe to the folks in the stadium, but you know who was... Surprise two partner. This team with the football, they were very confident coming in. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Takers. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Second and six. Nineteen, 
Going right back to Akers. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. 82 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. You really gonna chew clock only at fucking 14, bro? Come the fuck on. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 47. A give to Jones. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yard is back near midfield at the 49. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Second down now. Akers and a six yard gain gets him right around the 43. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. to Jones and he can only get this to the 42 yard line and that is not near enough just a one yard pick up there and it'll be fourth down well this was just simply excellent defense on this third down they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain the Vikings send out their punter as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt Turn on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. The Falcons take over first and ten at their own 20 yard line. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, Barty, you can sense them saying, okay, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. Quick pass out to Miller. His first reception of the divisional round matchup, but it's good for a first down as well. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Winston's throw complete here on target to Tunyon. That catch good for only a couple. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. A couple of first downs on the drive already, as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Working out of the gun, Winston. And he's going to hook up with his big tight end, complete. And he's brought down. 11 yards there, just like last play. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. 
A first down throw for Winston. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. 71 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. Jameis now on first down. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. Back now in Atlanta. It's the Falcons. They'll have the football, but trailing on the scoreboard as we get set to begin the fourth. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Do you think after that last run, they're thinking to themselves, we had to wait all day to play this night game, and we're still not able to run the ball the way we want to? Yeah, this defense, they've risen to the challenge all evening long. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Again, it's Balazs. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Well, sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two-score game, second half. You're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. And yeah, not going to get much better than this for an opportunity. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. Here's Winston completing a quick throw out wide. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Marquez Valdez-Scantling there to make the grab. And the Falcons have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Extra point try, good by Godot. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And this has been a tight game to this point. Of course, they usually are at this juncture of the playoffs. But with the lead and the football, the clock right now, their friend, as they try to book their spot in the conference championship next Sunday. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. They'll go again to Jones. 
And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and 10. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. Well, partner, that's how you make a long drive suddenly. Not so long anymore. One big play, and they're already in field goal range with designs on getting more than that. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw, eluding the pressure right. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Cole Komet there to make the grab. And the Vikings are moving closer to a date now. The NFC Championship game as they're able to extend this fourth quarter lead. Elliott good on the extra point. And the lead now up to 14. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Taken from about the 12. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. out there for their next drive and this could be the defining moment of their season all hyperbole aside you're trailing here in the fourth quarter the divisional round and they need to come up with something as they get this drive started and for the fourth time tonight it's an interception Derwin James with a pick and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. They'll try to run some clock now with Jones. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Now the Falcons gonna use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, they'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. The last run good for two, here's second and eight. Again, it's Jones. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. The Vikings on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. A gain of two, just like we saw on first and second down as well. Deuce is wild. The Vikings send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. six-yard boot but just 36 following a pretty decent return of 10 yards and the Falcons will be taking over first and 10 a 
About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Give him seven on the play, and that'll make it a second down. Now Balage gets around him. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. 86 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Winston now to throw on first down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. From the 41, Winston. That ball is caught. Marquez Valdez Scantling. A gain there of 21 yards. On first and 10, Winston. Quick hitter here to play. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Touchdown, Falcons! A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons have cut it to within a score. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Gano the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So a seven-point game, they'll need a recovery, the touchdown, and an extra point to tie. And the Vikings able to recover. The hands team does its job. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. They'll run on first down with Akers. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. They'll go again here with Akers. Just a couple on the ground there. That's going to bring up third and about six. Now a timeout called for by the defense as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. On 
On the give, this is Akers. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. It's a gain of eight there, and that should be enough to seal the victory. the option here's Akers and he'll take this ahead for about four second down coming up well one side moves on and then of course there's the other side and now they face what they don't want to face and that's the offseason think about the journey just getting to this game preseason right the OTAs and mini camps before that going through the regular season, fighting and scratching and clawing to make it to the playoffs. And then to get to this game, one game short of a conference championship, they'll have the whole offseason to think about it. Let's see if they use it as motivation. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night from Atlanta.